20% transmission. Um, so up to 80% blocked. That's what I put on the windows. Should make it a lot nicer this summer. Should keep a lot of that heat off the back of my neck and the back of my head when I'm running the machine. And the engine's right behind the cab, so you get a lot of heat coming up from the back of the cab and the back of the seat and everything like that. There's extra heat coming there. So when the sun's blasting through on there too, it's a lot. It's something I've had kicking around for a while. I was planning on doing it and I just haven't ever taken the time to put it on and I still had the roll and I thought, now's the time it's gonna get put on there. Save myself some heat issues. <laughs> I finally got my seal. Just took a little bit of doing. They did some research so they never had it found as having an issue in that part number. Um, but they ended up finding the right seal part, getting it sent over and getting it to me and everything. So we're good there. We're gonna go ahead and put that back together. Gonna to quickly finish wiping down the interior of the cab, put the floor mat back in it and have that ready to go. That's the intake to the cab for the air. And there's an intake air filter that I just put in, but it's in about five or six inches. And I get a lot of dust inside the cab. All it really has is this kind of pre-screen thing that mostly just keeps bugs out. So I took my old cabin air filter, and just kind of busted the dust out of it and everything, got it pretty well cleared off. Cut it open and put it in there and laid it in there just as kind of a pre, as a pre-filter. And then I'll put this back together and back on the same way it was. And I'm sure it's probably gonna plug up pretty quick. And that's okay. Just inside this, this intake and before the uh, cabin air filter, there's also a big open port in the ductwork that draws from inside the cab. When this plugs up, it will limit my fresh air intake, but it'll still work in recirculation mode to still come through the filter, through the AC unit, and give me full flow. Without everything coming straight in here, plugging up that filter and dumping dust into the cab. Should make enough of a difference that I should be able to keep my doors closed and my windows closed when I'm working. It sure gets dirty inside there and you get dirty and breathing dust and all kinds of stuff. That's the next glass I'm gonna have to replace sometime. Since I've owned it, it has had this piece of plexi in for this lower glass instead of the correct glass. And it's basically been fine up until the last year or so. And it really started to fade and yellow since then. So it'll have to be replaced soon. So this was the seal that came in the kit. And this is the seal that came out of my cylinder. Very much the same type of seal, just completely the wrong dimensions. They got me the right seal. Give that a little bit of a pre-oiling so that none of that's going together dry. And I mentioned this in the previous video, but the reason that this was bleeding off and bypassing, I believe, was not because the piston seals were bad. Once I got into here and got it opened up, that piston nut was loose on this threaded end. It had backed off almost a full rotation, which brought it quite a ways up off of the surface here. So there was no way to seal those threads. 
and would allow a slow passage of oil to come through the threads and out the end. So I don't believe that those seals were bad, but if we hadn't tore it down to replace them, I never would have found that thing being loose until it was too late. And too late in that situation would mean, uh, would mean that it had come apart. Okay, so I applied sealant into those threads because there's no o-ring or anything in there, but I wanted to make sure it was sealed. So I went ahead, it's probably what didn't need it, and it probably would have been fine, but I went ahead and put it in there anyway, tighten that up, and then put a little bit of green Loctite on that. Set screw so it wouldn't come loose, and then we'll center punch those. Okay, that should be ready to go back together. Okay. I rotated that pin. Since that pin bolts into this thumb, it stays stationary with the thumb. That means that the primary wear on that cylinder is pushing on that pin. So most of the wear that that pin will take is going to be on this cylinder side of it as it rotates through. So by flipping it over, now I've adjusted where the wear is going to hit that pin and should stretch the life of that pin a little bit longer. Go. Never did like that lifting hook very well. Never liked that lifting hook because it's an open ended hook, it sticks way out, it's always digging into stuff, and it's not the right size for a clevis bolt to fit through so I can't clevis anything and if I do it's still open-ended and has a chance of coming out. So while I'm doing the thumb welding we're gonna weld on the 5 8 D ring. And that'll work a lot better for me. Should do the trick. I need a do these final drives. This side needs to roll back about six inches. 
uh, get the drain bolts up and down vertically so they'll drain good. That side needs to go forward about a foot. So go ahead and start it and get things checked over from doing the service. And then I'll roll this track back and that one forward and we'll kind of just twist the base for a minute, get it in position so they can both drain. So let's start this. I guess it also only works if I put fuel back in it. Hear the difference. Before I get trying to do two things at once and end up with a mess. Do fun drives. That might work. <laughs> Gotta get out of the tap first. Okay. No, it's not going to hold much. It'll be enough to make a mess. Those might need a few minutes to drip. So, I guess I'll finish greasing the rest of the machine while that's dripping. So we got the final drives filled back up last night. Battery ran out of power on the camera, but we got them filled up, so they're ready to go now. I went through and greased everything on the boom and on the machine everywhere. I had one pin on the blade cylinder that wasn't taking grease, so I had to pull that pin out, polish it all up, and clean the pathways for the grease so that everything was opened up and could accept new clean grease, put it all back together and grease it up. So that's all good. Now, I've got two, two greasers that I can't get to in the position that the arm is. The one greaser I need to tuck the stick up underneath the arm to get to. So 
I'll move that up, grease it real quick on those last two. All right, that other one's still not taking grease either. And it's the rod end of the cylinder for the stick. So I'm gonna have to pull that pin. I've got it positioned with the stick vertical and all the hydraulics have been relaxed. That's why I turned the key, shut the machine off, turned the key back on to activate the controls and then moved all the levers to open the valves and let any backup pressure or built up pressure in the cylinders just relax. And, lead off. So I'm going to go up there, pull that pin out, polish it up, clean it up, open up the pathways for the grease and we'll put it back in. It ain't bad, it just isn't taken, so. So it's probably, there's wet grease in the joint and the groove is wet. So I'm gonna change out the grease nerf and see if it's got all the grease packed behind it. All right, so we're moving out of all the holes now. Since I've got this pin out, I'm gonna reinstall it in the other direction. That old air supply song. I'm all out of grease. Can't grease without it. Maybe my Aussie friends will appreciate that. I'm a baby boy in my family and had, we got six sisters two brothers you know me being the baby boy and I'm significantly younger than them a couple of my older sisters used to sing air supply songs to me as lullabies of a baby I guess some of that influence just stuck <laughs> so those songs are stuck in the head Oh, that made a difference already. <laughs> I thought, after I put it back in, I was like, gosh, it's still really stiff. Let's just change that greaser, because that's cheap. Made all the difference. It made it a lot easier. Now on the welding. I've got one crack right here, I noticed, starting on the blade. Just a little crack starting in right there. So I'm going to grind that out, drill out the ends, and weld that up. And we'll go ahead and get started welding the thumb extensions. I took a minute and went online to the CAT parts lookup because they have full CAD drawings of every part there. And I could see in the picture of the thumb, I counted along the thumb and I've got six spike teeth along the face edge of the thumb. And then there's about an inch and a half last little 
straight portion of the thumb that makes the end point. And when I look went back to my thumb, I'm worn down to the valley between the fourth and fifth teeth. So I've only got four teeth on my thumb. We're gonna add back about five to six inches of thumb to the total length. It's just how far that's worn down over the years to doing boulder walls and stuff. So we'll get that templated and cut out of this three quarter inch plate that I picked up from the salvage yard. And then we'll cut that all out and get the extension piece cut times two. And then I've got some hard facing rod that we're gonna go back over those teeth points and the face of the thumb and just put, them, put a bead of hard facing down in there to help with that abrasion and help make it last a little bit longer. And then we'll pull the pads off of the tracks and then this thing's ready to go down to the driveway and start digging. Three and a half, four, four and a half. So that's an easy progression. That's number four. We got to go, we got to rebuild number four and get five and six added. So we're going to make this curve come out the same as if it were number four here. Number four, the valley before number four is three and a half. So that would be three and a half point. And it's half, half an inch wider per tooth. This has a natural taper to it, but there's six teeth and then a little wing end piece. We are gonna go as if the valley before is three and a half inches. So there, so the next one will be three. Next one will be two and a half. And that should be four, five, six. So the next one should be two. And that one comes off to a square end like so. So if we have four, five, and six with the square point, and this will follow that same curve out like so. I am gonna build those back out with hard facing to get the points out where they need to be. But I am gonna point off the ones, the new ones that need to be cut. So that will be the extension. I might even flare that tip just a little bit. That'll be the first point that'll wear. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to flare that up. Okay. It's going to be the shape of our extensions. And that will line up here with the fork tooth and the curve. You can see how much of that tooth is worn off. Should have one, two, three, four, five, six points plus the little tip. <laughs> a lot of wear. That's just what happens on these things over time as you use them, especially for rocks. So now I will trace the fitment of the existing tooth. Like so. It should pretty well fit to both sides. Yeah. So that'll give me... So this fourth point's not going to really be part of that cut because I'm not going to get it on there. I'll just build this fourth point out with hard facing, just like I'm going to do to these. I'll bring these back out to a bit of a point with hard facing rods so they're a little bit taller. And I'll do that same thing here so my tip, my tip extension will start right in here and come up to there and just fit onto that and extend back out. It's the plan.
Okay. Well, that's good. I've got plenty of room to get that on there. This edge here is my most critical edge. I want that to be a nice clean edge with a really nice deep bevel because that's the edge that's gonna weld on. So I'm gonna need to get a deep penetration bead in there first and then build up the multi-layered bead to get a good weld across that. This edge, I just wanna dress it up kinda nice. Same with the point here. This stuff is gonna be the first to wear off, so I don't even care if there's torch marks in there or anything like that. Plus, I'm gonna lay a couple of beads of hard-facing weld across those ridges. So none of that really matters. I'm just trying to mostly take off the slag from the torch, and that's really about all. Not critical grinding here, just cleaning it up. Well, they're not a matching pair, but with any look, they won't look like this. One going north, one going south. Something like that. Okay.
Well, it looks like a chicken came over here and pooped on it to hold it together, in my opinion. But I think it's stuck. <laughs> I got too much respect for welders to call that welded, but it's probably stuck. Running out of daylight, I need to get that D-ring on so we can get this thing down to the job site and get working. Well, I'm out of time for the night. Only thing I have left is to unbolt the pads as I come off the concrete. It's not going to take long. It'll be a quick thing. I'm going to do that in the morning as I get started working down below. For now, I'm going to get over here, get my digging bucket on, and double check the clearances and tolerances with the new thumb extensions. And then I will get it all prepped and park it for the night. And then tomorrow morning, we'll rip them pads off, check the tracks, and go the heck to work down below. It's almost sundown. Sun's gone behind the mountains. And we're just setting up for a really beautiful full sky sunset. But I went ahead and took a minute and undid all the nuts I could get to. I could get to every single one on the outside. The inside, a little bit more complex. So I got to everything I could reach just to get a head start on the morning. So I will finish that up first thing in the morning. Take off everything that's already loose, roll ahead to where I need to to get those nuts off and get the rest of these off of there. All the time I've had it, I've had those pads on. 
I'm gonna take those off and I'm gonna have some brand new steel cleats to grip into all this dirt up here. For up here, it's just not worth having those pads on.